So he sat me down and I'm pretty sure I cried because all I heard was projects aren't happening. Everything comes to a halt um, and we got to get down to business. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna to tell you guys a little bit more about the debt-free part of our name. So to be able to help you to understand a little bit more about this, we're gonna take you back a few years. I got into some credit card debt out of high school, and at the time it felt very suffocating. I couldn't pay it, it went into default. I ended up having the whole bill collector thing calling, all of that stuff. It was a horrible experience, and after I finally got that all paid for, and done with and settled, I swore that I would never have a credit card again. Even though I wasn't debt free, the fact that I didn't use credit cards kind of made me feel a little bit better and a little bit superior and like I kind of had everything together, even though I really didn't. I've always handled our finances. I've always took care of the bills and making sure everything got paid and make sure that I can kind of uh, make everything work. And even back years ago, even when things actually weren't quite working, I would always figure, I mean, I, I was like Ray Donovan, I figured out a way to fix it. As it turned into this thing to where I had a really good relationship with our credit union and I could easily just call them and be like, hey, I need a $2,000 personal loan, knowing that, uh, you know, a few months or maybe a year or two, I'd get it paid back and then start this whole cycle over. And I told myself, well, I'm not using credit cards, so that's better. Throughout the course of our marriage, I've been extremely blessed to have a good job. And because of that stability of that job, uh, it tends to kind of make you take that for granted and, and to be a little more reckless, I feel like sometimes. And I've heard Dave Ramsey say that you kind of feel like that maybe you can out earn your stupidity. And that's really where, honestly, I would say that I was at. I was at this point where I knew that even if I made a mistake, I could work some overtime, I could do something and kind of get it fixed and move on and, and get by. For us though, where I would say things started to really change and to really feel like there was a problem was when we bought this house. So when we bought this house, many of you know, if you follow me on Instagram, that um, we sold our new beautiful, brand new build house to buy this fixer upper. And in my mind, um, I was gonna come in like Joanna Gaines and like we were gonna get this done maybe a year at the most. Um, and that was not the case. We were five years into it and um, y'all have been following her long and y'all know we're just now starting. So clearly when we moved in, Jeremy, Jeremy had to set me down and tell me the bad news that my dreams that I have been planning for this home needed to be put on hold. About a year after we moved in, maybe eight months, 10 months after we moved in, I just made this choice. I decided to borrow some money from my 401k. And so I borrowed about $18,000 out of my 401k. And to this day, it is one of the stupidest financial decisions I've ever made. And I had told myself, I'm gonna borrow this money, I'm gonna pay off our Suburban, and then I'm gonna use the rest of it to work on house stuff. And what ended up happening was we did a few house things. Not very many. Not very many. And then just kind of lived off of it. And um, never paid the Suburban off. It took from about summer until Christmas for that money to kind of slowly disappear. What happened was I just stuck it in the bank and it was just nice to have that cushion. Over time, that cushion slowly disappeared and by Christmas it was mostly gone. And after Christmas, I looked at the bills and I looked at everything that we had spent and I realized that we had overspent and that we actually didn't have enough money to cover everything, just normal stuff. And so in January, me being the fixer, I have to call the credit union and say, hey, I need to borrow a couple thousand dollars. And I didn't tell Jessica about that. So not long after that, I was at work one day and one of the guys that I worked with was listening to Dave Ramsey and, and I'd listened to Dave before um, and I really appreciated his principles and I knew that what he was teaching seemed very, fairly sound. Um, but honestly, like 
it was the first time that it really began to sink in. And I think that it was just this culmination of all these kind of bad choices for the last six months that it really hit home for me. And I was like, we need to do this. I make too much money to be broke. So he sat me down and I'm pretty sure I cried because all I heard was projects aren't happening. Everything comes to a halt. Um, and we got to get down to business. And so if I'm being completely honest, it took me, I think about three months to really jump on board. And up until those, those first three months, I would like kind of fight it because I, that that's me. I, you tell me to do something I'm probably not going to, or I'm going to fight it. And I would throw little things into like the grocery budget, um, just here and there because I could. And so I think once I stopped doing that, really got on board, I think that's when really everything came together. The biggest kicker for us was when we really began to sit down and to work together, that's when everything finally kicked into overdrive. And we started with Dave Ramsey's Baby Steps. And basically in, in the beginning of those, you're you start with your smallest debt and you start with that and you start paying off to your largest debt. We had everything financed from our phones to our Suburban to 401k loan, all of these different things that were out there. And so for us, it was about $34,000. And as we began to tackle this stuff and to slowly knock these things out, we started to see that momentum. We started to kind of finally get, you know, everything rolling and it really, really felt good. Not only were we working together, we bringing our finances together, we having actual intentional budgeting conversations and saying, here are the things, uh, here are the things that we need to, to make a priority. Here are the things, here's the extra money that now we can put toward this debt. Here's the things that we can cut out. Really working together, it really strengthened our marriage. It helped our marriage. And, and we didn't have a bad marriage to begin with, but like it made it stronger and it made it better. So even though we were doing better, communicating more, and really on the same page, our goals were kind of different. I was focused, um, like my goal was to get the house finished, to be able to get to a point to actually work on fixing up our fixer upper. And Jeremy's goal, I think, was you know, to change our family tree, to have more um, money in the bank and not have to rely on a personal loan. So all in all, we were able to pay off $34,000 in 15 months, as well as cash flow, several, um, several big car emergencies. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had a, a transmission that went out actually right after we got out of debt and it was, it was really, really eye-opening for us because while that was kind of scary, at the same time, um, it wasn't as big of a deal because we had already started putting back for a bigger emergency fund. And so we had the money to do that. And it was a $3,500 bill, but we had the money to do it. And I'm telling you, if that had happened a year, two years, 10 years before, um, it would have been, I mean, honestly, you know what we would have done? We'd have traded it in. Yeah. That's what we'd have done. We know and we've heard of, you know, friends and people that we know that trade in a car when it's time because they need to buy new tires and they don't have a thousand dollars to buy new tires. So it's like, just go trade in and get started over. And so one of the reasons that we want to do this and we wanted to take a moment to talk about this, uh, even though we are a DIY channel, um, is that is who we are and, and everything that we do is done with cash. And so as you're seeing these renovations and these different things happen, we're doing them with cash. And so, you know, debt-free doesn't have to mean cheap. It just has to mean that you're intentional about what you're doing. And so if you're out there and you're watching this and you're going, okay, like I resonate with some of this stuff. I make too much money to be this dang broke. Um, I'm making a lot of poor decisions financially, whatever it is. Um, we would love it if you would contact us. Maybe you hit us up in the comments below. Uh, let us know, you know, your thoughts, any ways that we can help you and pray for you, whatever it is. Shoot us a DM on Instagram and just say, hey, I watched your video. Um, could you give me some more information about this or that? We'd love to help.